Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Buying a new car can be both a really exciting experience, but can also be really overwhelming. Specifically, buying a new EV can feel even more complicated because there are new things to consider you've probably never even thought of before. Things like batteries, how many motors there are, plus the wide array of options that come on EVs like a Rivian, which have impacts to the overall experience, such as total range and time spent charging. Today, I'm gonna to help you specifically understand the battery options when choosing which Rivian R1 best fits your needs so you can make an educated decision in 2025. Let's dive in. First, the Rivian R1T and R1S are both available with three different battery sizes, standard, large, and max packs. Each size comes with similar range for both models, but can vary slightly based on the aerodynamic efficiencies of the truck compared to the SUV. The truck tends to eke out a few more miles versus the SUV in similar scenarios. It's important to note that Rivian lists batteries based on miles instead of how batteries are actually measured, which is with kilowatt hours but it's still a good reference point to compare. I believe they presented it this way because they may change the actual physical capacity of the battery packs in the future if they can make the vehicles more efficient to deliver a similar range using a smaller physical battery size. This is actually a good thing as an EV owner. However, one pitfall to measuring batteries by miles is that the mile rating can differ based on what tires you have in the vehicle, which drive mode you use, and how fast you're going. The beefier your tires and the faster you drive, the fewer miles you'll be able to go from the same amount of battery capacity. For each battery size, I'll reference the difference that specific tires or notable drive modes can have on each battery pack option. All numbers I'll be referencing today are for what's known as Gen 2 vehicles, which is model year 2025 or later. Okay, so the first battery size is called Standard Pack. The Standard Battery Pack is rated for 258 miles on both the R1T and 258 miles on the R1S when equipped with the base all-season tires. This battery option is only available in the dual motor configuration and has a few unique characteristics that make it a really interesting choice and the likely default option for most drivers. First, the battery pack chemistry is different for the standard pack versus any of the other options that Rivian has. It's built with what's called LFP, which stands for lithium iron phosphate. LFP batteries are unique in that they actually do better when charged to 100% at least once a week and are extremely durable in terms of the number of times you can charge them. LFP generally handles two times the number of charge cycles for the same level of battery degradation as other, more common battery chemistries. Practically, this means that as a Rivian customer, you can safely leave your charge limit set to 100%, giving you the full maximum capacity each and every time you charge. In fact, the batteries prefer it in order to stay correctly calibrated. When you consider that the huge majority of charging happens at home, heck, there are many drivers who never fast charge their vehicles away from home, then having 100% capacity every time you charge really extends the usable range you get from the vehicle, making it a terrific value in comparing dollars per mile available. Even if you are road tripping, the lower maximum capacity is less of an issue because the LFP battery can also sustain a higher rate of charge at fast charging locations for longer into the battery capacity compared to Rivian's other battery pack options. This means if you're road tripping like a pro and only really charging from say 15% to 80% or even less at any given stop, you will actually spend less total time charging to get to your final destination. It's a bit counterintuitive, but the smallest battery may actually be the better road tripping option on top of being the better option for around town thanks to the 100% charge limit and faster sustained charging speeds when on a road trip. The only real option for the standard pack dual motor that impacts range is opting for the sport or range wheels. Since the rubber makes more of a difference than the metal wheel itself, both the sport and range options provide the same rated range of 270 miles, which is only 12 miles more. Considering the added cost, the limited increase in range, and loss of three peak snow rating from the all season tires, the decision for wheels is mostly about personal preference on appearance. Next, we have the middle pack called large pack. It's important to note that Rivian made a significant change to the large pack capacity to their prior Gen 1 vehicles, which were model year 2024 or older. This change, which is primarily lowering the overall capacity of the large pack, made this largely the worst option to pick for most buyers, at least in my opinion, on the newer Gen 2 vehicles. While the large pack is the minimum requirement for a number of options, such as paint color, drive modes, and other packages, the stated range increase is a bit of an illusion. At first glance, you may be seeing the total stated range of 329 miles compared to the 258 miles of the standard pack and thinking that's a pretty big bump. If you upgrade to the all-terrain package, the 329 miles drops to 289, 
a loss of 40 miles with the addition of three peak rated tires and a number of other nice features that don't impact range. But let's dive into the details to show you why it's not quite everything it seems. First, the large pack range is stated with either the sport or range wheels. When equipping the same range maximizing wheels on the standard pack, a multi thousand dollar upgrade, mind you, the extra range drops from 71 miles to just 59. But that still isn't the full story. Remember the battery chemistry and charging limits I referenced earlier for the special LFP battery used in the standard pack? Well, the large pack uses a more traditional NMC chemistry, which stands for nickel manganese cobalt and has an increased level of wear when charged 100%. As a result, your daily charge limit will be somewhere in the 70 to 80% range. Rivian recommends 70% for daily charging, but most experienced EV drivers set their vehicles to 80% as the daily limit, reserving higher charging levels just for road trips or weather events. So if you're using Rivian's recommended charging limit, that means your 329 miles of daily range suddenly becomes 230. Or to put it another way, the daily range of a large pack with the same wheels and tires is actually 40 miles less on a day-to-day -day basis. To make the case even worse, the fast charging performance when on a road trip is actually slower on the large pack versus the standard pack, meaning you spend more time at each charging stop for the same number of miles added in range. So unless you desperately want a different color or exclusive option package from the higher trims, but can't quite swing the added money for a max pack, my advice is to pass on the large pack models at least based on what's currently available. If you're finding this Rivian battery breakdown helpful, please hit like and subscribe below this video. It really helps out the channel and allows me to make more videos like this to help people just like you make an informed buying decision. Now we get to the biggest battery currently offered from Rivian, the Max Pack. If you're looking to get the largest number of miles on a 100% charge before needing to plug in again, this is the best that Rivian has to offer. The Max Pack is offered as a dual motor option, a tri motor option, and a quad motor option, which is expected to ship later in 2025. Understanding the motors and their impact on range is going to be more important here as the different drive modes for each motor configuration make a big impact on how all that added electricity is used in relation to range. The first Max Pack configuration is the dual motor. On paper, this combination with any of the sport or range tires offers the pinnacle of Rivian range. If that is the thing that matters most to you in choosing your vehicle, then this is the one for you. This top end range is rated at 410 miles with more efficient sport and range tires or 370 miles with the all-terrain package upgrade. That range is calculated using the all-purpose mode, which is the same for all dual motor configuration and it, and it dynamically disconnects and connects the rear motor in a variety of scenarios to give you a nice blend of performance and efficiency. Taking the 410 miles of range and comparing it at both 70% state of charge, which is 287 miles, or 80% state of charge, 328 miles, you'll see an appreciable increase in daily range compared to the base standard pack models. However, just like the large pack, the max pack also uses NMC battery chemistry and will be a bit slower than the standard pack in terms of time per mile when fast charging on road trips. The charging performance at home should be identical though, and the added range when charging to even higher states of charge can be beneficial in more remote locations. Next, we have the tri-motor and quad-motor max pack vehicles. These trims are in a different class than the dual motor versions for a variety of reasons, most of which comes down to the included options on the car. Both the tri-motor and quad-motor vehicles are only available with the max pack battery, but in terms of range performance, there is a key distinction for tri-motor and quad-motor variants drive modes. But in terms of range performance, there is a key distinction for tri-motor and quad-motor variants. Drive modes. You see, the all-purpose mode for these higher-end variants are fundamentally different than that of the dual-motor configurations. For tri- and quad-motor versions, all-purpose is a full-time all-wheel drive mode. This means you get increased power, different regenerative braking feel, and notably decreased range. However, these trims also include an, an exclusive conserve mode that acts exactly like the all-purpose mode on the dual motor vehicles. Given how the EPA rates vehicles though, it forces Rivian to display a range number that seems like more of a drop off than it really is if you're going somewhere far or just need a lot more range for the day's activities. When you compare the tri-motor range, for example, versus dual motor, you'll notice the stated range for tri-motor is 371 miles versus 410 miles with the same wheel and tire combination. But what about when in conserve mode, which is a lot more comparable from an efficiency standpoint? A tri-motor vehicle is rated for approximately 405 miles when in conserve mode. This means you're only losing about 1.2% of range in exchange for all the other benefits offered 
by the tri-motor variant. This means you really aren't giving up that much in terms of range versus the dual motor, but you pick up increased drive mode options, a default mode that is more fun to drive, and a nicer interior. It does appear the loss in range is a bit more when equipped with the all-terrain package, but you are still in the ballpark of the dual motor vehicles when you use the conserved drive mode. So what about the quad motor? Well, at the time of this recording, the official EPA numbers haven't been released for the Gen 2 quad motor variant. However, if you're looking at the highest performance spec that Rivian has to offer in terms of zero to 60 performance, you're probably not nearly as interested or worried about maximum range. When the quad motor does ship, I'll do a follow-up video about it specifically. Phew, that's a lot of information to digest about the various Rivian configurations available in 2025 and how they actually impact real world range. So the biggest question here is, which combination should you buy? Well, for most buyers, I think the dual motor standard pack offers by far the best value in terms of range per dollar for terrific day-to-day -day range, considering most Americans only drive 36 miles per day. And the standard pack also appears to offer the best fast charging performance for those looking to minimize their time per charging stop. The value proposition gets even better when you use my referral link down below when you purchase your Rivian for 500 points to spend on a Rivian gear shop and outfit your new vehicle with some fun goodies. If your needs dictate needing even more maximum capacity for reaching remote locations with little to no charging options, or you want to have even more juice to power accessories at your destination, then the tri-motor max pack serves as your next best upgrade path in terms of value. However, if you really don't care as much about a number of the options and features that are included with the tri-motor version, and just wanna maximize your total available range for the lowest possible cost, the dual motor max pack is a great option. Just about the only model I would advise you truly reconsider is the large battery pack, given that the usable daily range and the value for money are the worst in the lineup. I hope you enjoyed this video and gathered enough information to settle on which battery configuration is best suited to your specific needs. If you liked what you learned, hit the thumbs up button down below. And if you wanna learn more about Rivian's EVs and future technology, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. Until next time, cheers.